Well, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome back to our Facebook Live. Uh, today is trivia, and we've been on a little bit of a hiatus, but we're really uh, excited to be back uh, with you here today, Wednesdays. Um, just as a quick reminder, Wednesdays are either trivia day or study hall uh, day. Today happens to be a trivia day. And for those of you uh, joining us expecting wine trivia, we got a little surprise for you. It's actually um, a different beverage that we're talking about today. So we're talking about spirits today, and more specifically, uh, whiskey, and who better to have us uh, lead us through the trivia of whiskey than uh, Jess Helfand, who is in Tennessee, home of some of uh, America's greatest whiskey uh, producers. Jess, welcome. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So I will just remind everyone how it works in case you um, have forgotten during the hiatus or you're just joining us uh, for the first time for our, our trivia. So what you're gonna do is Jess is gonna ask uh, questions that are gonna be some uh, selections for you to choose from. You put your answers into the comment uh, section. We will play some countdown music while uh, you're doing that. I will reveal, uh, or I will tell Jess what the majority of the answers are, and then Jess will reveal, um, and then we'll move on to the next question. So. Uh, the more people who participate, the more fun it is. So I'm gonna hand it over to you, Jess, uh, and bring up your slide deck. Great, thanks so much, Christian. All right, so as Chris said, it is all about spirits and all about whiskey today. So let's start with one here. So is it spelled whiskey with an E or whiskey without an E in Scotland, Canada, or Japan? You can just say E or no E in your comments. Okay, we have our Jeopardy Ersatz music playing. Here. 
Okay, we have some, we have consensus, Jess, and um, everyone who's answered so far says no E. Y'all are correct. It is whiskey with no E. The general rule of thumb, if the country's name has an E in it, then so does the spelling of whiskey. So Ireland and the United States, it's typically spelt with an E, although there are exceptions. So Old Forester, Maker's Mark, both American whiskeys, neither use an E as a way of paying homage to their Scottish roots. All right, next question. Which of the following is not a requirement for a spirit to be recognized as whiskey? Made from 100% fermented grain, distilled below 190 proof, aged in oak for a minimum of two years, or bottled at a minimum of 80 proof? And this is just generic old whiskey, not a place of origin associated with it. Okay, so let people slow to answer on this one. Tougher it's question a, usually indicates a tougher yeah. question. A little nitty gritty here. Yeah. All right. Okay. Shall we? All right. We got we got uh, Joanne and Kelly putting uh, putting in their answers. So we'll wait for uh, maybe one more person until we have three answers. So go if you're sitting on the fence. There we go. Shirley just uh, put in her answer. So we have Kelly saying 100 fermented 100 percent uh, fermented grain. Uh, Michelle saying aged in oak, and Shirley saying bottled at a minimum of 80 proof. All right. Well, one of you guys got it right there. Um, the answer is aging in oak for two years. So to be generic, it simply has to be put into an oak container. So no rules about how long until we get into whiskeys with more country specificity. But good job. That was a toughie. All right. This one might be a little bit easier. True or false? The most commonly used grains are barley, corn, wheat, and rye. True or false? Okay, so we have Kelly, Michelle, Shirley, and uh, Carla, as well as uh, Jonah and Alvaro, all answering true on this one. Excellent job, it is indeed true. Remember that before we can make a whiskey, we have to make a beer from grain. And these four are the most commonly used grains for that distiller's beer. All right. Speaking of these grains, each whiskey has what we call a mash bill, and that's the combination of grains that are used to make the beer that will then be distilled. Corn provides butterscotchy, almost sweet flavors. Barley provides flavors of cereals. Wheat gives us that smooth texture and nuttiness. What does rye give us? Peppercorn and allspice marzipan and almond, or caramel and molasses. Okay, Michelle was the quickest on the buzzer. Actually, the only answer so far from Michelle. What? Uh, here comes Shirley. So we have Michelle saying peppercorn and allspice. We have Shirley uh, saying caramel and molasses. 
and Kelly, uh, Peppercorn and Allspice, as well as uh, Jonah. So we have a consensus with Peppercorn and Allspice. That is correct. Michelle is on it today. So. Rye is generally described as spicy, hot, bold, peppery, and sometimes even herbal. All right, so one more of these grain questions. So barley must be malted to release its enzymes. This enzyme is then needed to convert starch into what? Again, a little technical on this question, but if we think about the fact that first we have to ferment something, we know what we need in order to have a fermentation kickoff. That's one of those things that we have to have. Fill in the blank ones are always a little bit more challenging. Yep. But I have a feeling we have some smart, smart people here are whiskey lovers. Michelle, we're counting on you. Right. <laughs> uh, so Michelle has locked in her answer. Let's see if we get a couple of others uh, to, to go along with that. Um, great, Kelly's, uh, Kelly's there. One more answer once we have three. Okay, and Carla, all agreeing uh, that it is sugar. Y'all are absolutely right, it is sugar. The process of malting is where barley is placed in a warm, damp room and the grains are allowed to sprout and grow. And as the grains grow, they release chemical enzymes. After a couple days of growth, we heat it all up and essentially killing the wee baby grains. But at that point, we have enough enzyme there to, um, when we crush up the grains, mix it with some uh, water, we have enzymes released that convert all of our wonderful starches into sugar then voila, we have fermentable sugars and yeast, th toss that in there, and then we can make a distiller's beer. So you might have heard about peat being used in the malting process. It is used to add a smoky aromatic note to whiskeys. What is peat? Is it dried grass, decaying wetland vegetation, sea kelp, or charred oak staves. We have Shirley um, locking in our answer early, um, and we have Michelle as well, both of them agreeing that it's decaying uh, wetland vegetation. Uh, let's see if there's any, um, and Jonah as well, decaying wetland vegetation. So three, three answers for that. And y'all are absolutely correct. So that decaying wetland vegetation is found in bogs and quagmires. And then during that malting process, the barley is heated to stop its growth and the kilns can be fueled by peat, adding that signature smoky notes. All right, so which two of the following are required for single malt scot scotch whiskey? Does it have to show peat influence? Does it have to be made at a single distillery? made in column stills or made from only malted barley and water. And it's two of these. Okay, 
All right. Well, we have a lot of people tackling this one. Uh, so we have Bartek um, saying B and D. Uh, so I guess he means made from a single distillery and made from only malted barley and water. Um, we have Michelle saying a single distillery made only from malted uh, barley. Then we have Alex um, saying single distillery made in a column still. Um, and the rest uh, are in agreement with single uh, distillery in malted barley. The consensus there has it right. So we have to be made at a single distillery, that's the single part, and made from only mar malted barley, no other grains, that's the malt part. Additionally, to be single malt Scotch whiskey, it has to be made in Scotland, has to be aged in Scotland for at least three years, and must contain no substances other than, or no added substances rather, other than a little bit of caramel color. So, speaking of adding things, which whiskeys can have flavor added? Scotch whiskey, Irish whiskey, or Canadian whiskey? three uh, answers, four answers now, all uh, with the consensus of Canada or Canadian and, whiskey. Um, and that is correct. The answer is indeed Canadian whiskey. So I mentioned this in the context of single malt, but scotch at large cannot have any flavors added. Neither can Irish whiskey. And flavored whiskeys are very, very popular these days, and the labeling laws get pretty complicated. You may have seen Jameson, one of the largest Irish whiskey producers out there, they came out with a cold brew coffee whiskey. That is no longer legally considered Irish whiskey. In fact, it's simply labeled as whiskey and coffee on the label. So things to look out for. Mm. All right, so speaking of flavors, um, Canada does not have the same rules in place and flavored Canadian whiskey is still considered Canadian whiskey, so long as it has the aroma and taste generally attributed to Canadian whiskey. Which of these is not a flavor used by Crown Royal Canadian whiskey? Peach, apple, salted caramel, coconut, or Texas mesquite? I made up one of these. So we have um, two answers that people are choosing. One is coconut and the other one is Texas mesquite. So, so the one I made up is coconut. Um, the rest are either currently available or retired flavors. The Texas mesquite was indeed used by Canadian, um, by Crown Royal a while back, but it has now been a retired flavor. Mm. All right, so true or false? Irish whiskey must be triple pot distilled.
Okay, we have two answers so far. Let's get that third one in there. Um, Kelly uh, answering first, and she is answering um, true. No other takers so far. And Shirley also answering true. So we have two, two votes for true. Any dissenters? Anyone saying false? Yes, we have Michelle, uh, who we can always count on, and she comes through with false. Well, it is indeed false, um, but it's an understandable confusion because Ireland is very closely associated with triple pot distillation because it's used by the pillars of the industry there, namely Middleton and Bushmills distilleries. But it is not actually required. So good job, Michelle. All right, changing gears a little bit. So what year was the first commercial whiskey distillery established in Japan? Okay, we have Kelly coming in with uh, 1870, Michelle coming in with 1975, and Shirley agreeing with Kelly, uh, 1870. All right, the answer is in the middle. It's going to be 1923. So um, 1870 distillation begins in Japan. In 1923, Yamakaze Distillery opens its doors. And 1929 was the first Japanese single malt scotch excuse me single malt whiskey was sold i'm sure something notable happened in 1975 but i just threw that number in there <laughs> all right friends um if it is labeled as bourbon a whiskey may be made where anywhere in the world anywhere in the u.s anywhere in the southern u.s or it must be made in kentucky Okay, so we have here uh, Bartek, Shirley, Michelle, all saying Kentucky. We have Kelly, uh, Jonah, and Alex saying the U.S. All right, well, Kelly, Jonah, and Alex have it right. Anywhere in the U.S., so long as it meets some other requirements. So that said, y'all that were saying Kentucky, there's a reason you're thinking Kentucky. Um, the vast majority of bourbon is indeed made in Kentucky. The statistic is something staggering. I think in 2017, there were more barrels of bourbon in Kentucky than there were people in Kentucky. So mm. there you go. <laughs> All right, so bourbon um, has rules to it. It must be made from a mash bill that is dominated by corn. How much corn is required? 50, 51, 60, or 65 percent? Okay, here we have uh, consensus, Bartek, Kelly, Jonah, Alex, and Michelle, all saying 51%. Y'all are correct. Uh, bourbon gets the corn butterscotch flavor from corn. So, all right, a handful of next questions are all about bourbon, in case you couldn't tell. Uh, but bourbon must be aged in new oak. 
the barrel and the aging process can create up to how much of the bourbon's final flavor? 30 to 40%, 40 to 50, 50 to 60, or 60 to 70 percent. Again, everyone on the consensus train, uh, 60 to 70% is the preferred answer. That is absolutely correct. So aside from the grain and the yeast characteristics, the majority of the flavors associated with bourbon come from the barrel. Anytime I have a wine student who doesn't know what new oak smells like, I strongly suggest they pour themselves a glass of bourbon and that will tell them what new oak smells like. All right, so during the aging process, when does bourbon acquire the most oak character? The first four years, between five and 10 years, or 10 or more years? Okay, so we have um, a couple of different answers, uh, uh, three answers for uh, zero to four years, um, and then uh, some answers for five to 10 years. The zero to fours have it. Good job. During those first four years, the bourbon will take on the majority of its amber color and that smoky, woody, vanilla flavor from the oak. During the next five years, the bourbon will become a little bit darker and start to show more fruity, candied, nutty notes. And then after 10 years, um, the bourbon can become more smooth and woody, but you really lose a lot of those fruity, herbal, flavory um, flavors to it. Um, and it starts to show more notes of extended oxidation. All right. So let's move on here. So if labeled as Kentucky bourbon, the whiskey must be aged for at least how many year or years in Kentucky? One, two, three, or four. cameo appearance. Yeah, um, Mr. Darcy wanted to play too. Sorry, y'all. A, a, whis a whiskey lover as well, maybe. Um, maybe. We, <laughs> we have answers coming here. Again, consensus. Kelly, uh, Michelle, Alex, Shirley, um, Jonah, all saying two years. It is, in fact, only one year. That is all that is required for it to be Kentucky bourbon. So, mm. But if we... We did. If we label it as straight bourbon, though, the whiskey must be aged for at least how many years? One, two, three, or four. Okay, team, here's a shot at redemption. OK, 
Okay. Here, everyone is doubling down on their original answer and putting two, although we have uh, uh, Antoinette coming in with three. The twos have it. Uh, if you're it bourbon, it's too weird. You might be noticing a pattern as we go through these next few questions. So if labeled as bottled in bond, the whiskey must be aged for how many years? One, two, three, or four. have uh, four is so far the um, answer selected. And that is the right answer. Excellent job, y'all. So the term bottled in bond dates back to 19, excuse me, 1897, when President Grover Cleveland signed the bottled in bond law into act. Had a whole bunch of uh, rules requiring um, the structure of the whiskey to be done in a certain way to protect consumers from cheap and sometimes dangerous whiskey out there. So this was aged in a warehouse that was kind of run by the government. So you knew it came from the right place and wasn't adulterated. All right. So next to last question, true or false? Sour mashing means including back set liquid from the previous distillation in the fermentation of grain for the next batch, true or false? Okay, so we have the answers coming in here, um, all as true so far. And that is correct. It is indeed true. Good job. So sour mashing is a common phrase on American whiskey bottles and virtually all major bourbon and Tennessee whiskey distillers use this technique, even though only a portion of them will actually say sour mash on their, on their marketing materials, but it's done very commonly. Why? Why are we doing this? Last question. Why sour mash? Is this to create a consistent flavor profile? To regulate the pH? To provide nutrients to the yeast? to reduce water use, or all of the above. Here, everyone choosing uh, all of the above as their answer. And that is absolutely correct. All of these, all of these reasons. That is so one more applause for everyone. All right. Oh, excellent work. That's so well. it, it looks like I'm stuck in a very contemplative pose here. Um, for some reason, my video is, is frozen, <laughs> but you can hopefully still, uh, still hear me. Uh, yes. So first of all, Excellent job, everyone, uh, for not being tipped off that this was a whiskey trivia. The amount of right answers here was staggering. So, um, so great job on uh, on that. In case you want to learn any uh, more about um, spirits in general, 
uh, check out some of our WSET um, spirits classes. Uh, definitely, we'll we'll get you up your game on not just whiskey, but uh, all all the other spirits as well. And then, if you are really looking to double down into Scotch or bourbon, uh, we also have two specialized Scotch and bourbon. Uh, courses for you as well but looks like a lot of you don't even need that uh, because you are just um, killing it with with the trivia so Jess thanks so much for putting putting together these these fun questions and um, tell Mr. Darcy thanks for making a guest <laughs> I was hoping he would he would show up and thanks it's everyone for joining us time. next week we will be back with uh, study hall so join us for our WSET study halls which happen every other Wednesday. In the meantime, uh, stay safe and hopefully enjoy some scotch or, or bourbon tonight. Thanks, Jess. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.